Hello, and welcome back to diving into the deep end of the pool with no floaties and hoping a handsome young lifeguard will come and save me. So we have a new teaser and a new clip. How exciting. Double dipping in the pond today, okay? This is like Christmas with divorced parents. Double the gifts. I'm only going to be covering the teaser in this video. However, before you say anything, yes, I realize the clip was released first. But listen, listen, I'm from Tennessee, okay? Which means I'm half raccoon, which means I'm always going to go for the newest, shiniest thing I can get my grubby little paws on. And that just so happens to be this teaser. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you are returning here from my first analysis video, hi, hello, beautiful. What's up, sickos? How's it fanging? No. Yeah, that one works better on paper for sure. Sorry for saying that. Like if you saw that on a sticker, you'd be like, oh, that's cute. But if someone says that to you in real life, like I just did, stab him in the throat with a fork. I mean, ugh. I don't know. By the time I post this though, I might be saying that to everybody and I might be getting stabbed in the neck with a fork. Who knows? That's the excitement of life. You never know what each day is going to bring. <laughs> um, thank you for all your lovely comments on that first video. It's been delightful. It's been making my day every single day. Hope this video lives up to any low expectations you might have for me. The pressure's on. If this is your first walk around the autumn bottom block, welcome. I have refreshments off to the right. Uh, I brought some shrimp cocktail, uh, mini donuts. Grab a plate, get a glass of blood. Wine. Wine is what I meant to say. I promise, officer, it's wine. Why would I have a punch bowl filled with blood? I mean, do you know how unsanitary that is? It would take like at least two full-blooded humans to fill up that much or pigs you know it could it doesn't it's probably not humans it's definitely it's because it's wine it's wine um yeah wine is what i meant to say get a glass of wine not a glass of blood listen the vampire brain worms have burrowed deep okay it's terminal the doctors have told me i only have a few weeks maybe months in fact left until I'm deemed too intolerable for general society and I'm put down for being too annoying. They're gonna old yeller me. And I'm wearing the right colors for that. All right, enough verbal blunders. Uh, we're here for this nice New York strip flank that AMC has so kindly delivered to our table. So without further ado, let's have a look, shall we? Don't be afraid, start the tape. The blood is bad here. The blood is bad here. The blood is bad here. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember any of this. Oh! Ooh! 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 The vibe. Eerie. The feelings. Ominous. My toes. Curled. The blood is what? The blood is bad here. Starting off. What's so funny, fellas? Huh? What is this, summer camp? Did the ice cream man give away free cones today? Did Timmy fall in the well? What are we all smiling about? In what world are Daniel, Armand, and Louis all smiling and laughing and cutting up together? Mm -mm, no, this isn't right. This is... Something is amiss, okay? There was a lot of spooky things happening in this trailer. This by far is the most frightening. What the hell is this? Like, come on, look at them. Oh, they're lounging, they're smiling. Look at, look at Daniel here. Look how gleefully he is starting this new recording. Daniel, really? AKA commander in chief of the grumpy queen committee? No. Is there salmon around? Because there's something fishy going on here. Oh my god. I feel a chill in the air. I think we might have just shifted a degree away from the sun. Oh, god's light, even. 
This is wrong. This is funny, though, considering we know that this takes place right before or like at least a little bit before the clip that they released on Friday because look at Daniel, the shirt he's wearing, same shirt here. Louis and Armand are in these same outfits here and it's still daytime outside. So we know this isn't afterwards after they've kissed and made up and Daniel's starting the recording. So this is the start of the interview for this day. Everything is like giggle, giggle, hee hee, ha ha until Peepa says Paris sucks. sucks and then suddenly gay boy and bi devil are pouncing on him about being a shitty husband. The laughs have stopped. The universe has found its balance again. That's what that clip was. <laughs> yeah. But also opening line here, listen to it. Don't be afraid, start the tape. Don't be afraid, start the tape. First off, Louis, I am afraid. I'm very afraid. What the fuck is happening in this teaser? <laughs> The first 30 second teaser they released was very much, you know, intense emotion, little clips of what we're going to see within the season, uh, you know, the epic highs and lows of high school football, the epic highs and lows of vampirism in the modern world and the not so modern world with still like the presence of what the fuck is going on here. This teaser is just all what the fuck is going on here. And I love it. I love not having a clue. This is so fun. First teaser, substance. This teaser, style. And I love both equally. Not to say that this doesn't have substance and the first one didn't have style, but like, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Anyways, so that line, don't be afraid, start the tape. We know that is one of the episode titles for this season. The episodes were logged either like on IMDb or submitted to uh, like the writing, uh, 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 whatever <laughs> television thing. I know this from the Immortal Daily Twitter account. If you don't follow them, they're great. They have a lot of good resources and information about like more behind the scenes, like technical stuff going on, as well as obviously like new, uh, material being posted. I, like many others, speculate that this episode is going to be an episode where we go back to the 70s and revisit the initial interview because Roland Jones has stated that that is going to come up more and that's going to gain a lot more relevance and importance in this season. And I'm very excited for that. I mean, I know we all, we all probably think this, but it's just the device of having the initial interview and this being a revisit is brilliant. This is such a genius idea on Roland Jones and the writing team's part. When I initially first started watching this show and, you know, they make mention of, you know, the previous interview, I, I'm sure like many others, was like, oh, that's fun. They're making a little like shout out allusion to the movie like oh yeah we've kind of done this before but we're redoing it but like hey girl i thought it was just like a little a nod and then as the season goes on obviously realizing oh no this is part of this story this is not a nod to uh, previous incarnations of this retelling this is actually gonna pop up again and i'm so excited to see that pop up again a because I'm fascinated to see what direction they're going to go with this. B, because I want to see Devil's Minion happen. And I think that's going to happen a bit in the 70s. I'm curious to see if it's also going to continue into the current day. But C, most importantly, I'm just ready to see smooth, suave, sexy Afro uh, Louis again. Okay? Like young Daniel, I get you. Even if you're not gay. Like, that man comes up to me in a bar, slaps his American Express down, and says drinks are on him. Man, you can say whatever you want. Shoot, you're a vampire? Me too. I'll call up my buddy Barry Keoghan. We'll make this a whole little vamp party. All right, let's go. Where's that apartment? So yeah, that, that line, that clip, it's not what's being said here because Louis's words don't match up with what he's saying. And also, he says, start the tape, which... I know that Louis is like not the most tech savvy person in the world, but I think it's fair to say that Louis does know the difference between a tape recorder and a laptop. Are we fine in me making this assumption? Are we percolating in this function? Mary J. Blige would like to know. Moving on. Gorgeous, gorgeous shot of Armand at the murder mansion. <sighs> 
Dude, if you're looking for another brain to, like, scoop around in, I've got one. I've got at least half of one, okay? You're more than welcome to it. We got them riding off on the motorcycles. This teaser, you know, has a lot of little clips that we've seen before, which I'm totally fine with, because I, I'm totally okay with them keeping cards close to the heart, your chest. What is that phrase? Keep your cards close close to I don't know you know what I'm trying to say the less I know the more I can speculate the crazier I can get with it and that's what's fun but yeah we have this fun shot of them going away on the motorbikes and then this <sighs> okay we've got to talk about it a little bit okay yeah um, Louie taking a photo of Claudia on their way to the murder mansion. She's wearing the same clothes. We got the blue plaid shirt. We got the fun, cute little ascot, this tan and the hat. Here's murder mansion, same outfit. So this is on their way to, you know, rip some throats, have some good bonding time with your new friends and your dad. Sorry, brother. This is so heartbreakingly beautiful because from this and from other like little pieces and clips we've seen with her with the theater, you know, we really get the sense that Claudia has found what she's looking for. I mean, she wanted to find other vampires. She wanted to know more about vampires. And these are the guys who are gonna tell her more and um, gain independence. As I mentioned before, it looks like they're kind of taking the route of Claudia kind of immersing herself a little bit more into the theatre and louis louis is not a huge fan of the of the coven here he's like yeah armand is hot and everything and we're gonna like bone and hang out but i'm not really gonna fraternize with the rest of you because y'all some freaks okay whereas claudia seems to uh, take a shining to them or at least that's what we've been led to believe in the little clips that we've seen uh, it's what we've been led to believe from Louis's remembrance of her at this time. Who's to say if that's going to change later on? But for now, seeing her happy and seemingly to have found her place, something, something about the things that you desire and want the most are the things that will hurt you the most. And um, boy, do they hurt her the most. Also, so I started recording like a little bit for the new clip before this teaser came out. So I mentioned this in my video for the new clip, but I want to mention it now too as well, because I don't think I could say it enough times. I'm so ready to see Delaney's Claudia, the little bits and pieces that we've seen so far. I have every single confidence in her. I was crushed, devastated when it was announced that Bailey Bass was not returning because I love i adore what bailey did with this character in season one i think she's fantastic i think she's definitely a face to watch out for i hope that she goes on to do a million billion more things because i think she's extremely talented and i was going to be supportive of delaney anyways but there's going to be grief there there's going to be <laughs> sadness and you just never know till you actually are able to see them working their role and I think so far, I like I said, I'm already 100% sold. I think she's phenomenal. And to have like convinced me so wholeheartedly in the tiny little bits that we've seen so far, that's incredible. That's talent. I'm ready for it. Moving on. We've got this shot that we've talked about before of Louis clinking glasses in a bar with someone. Who can it be? Who could it be? Followed up by this gorgeous shot of Louie flipping the switch in the red room, which, you know, from the first teaser, we saw Louie doesn't have a good time in this little red room. Can I also just point out too, you can definitely tell there's been a budget increase as well, just in these new teasers and everything. Obviously, like, they're in a much bigger, grander uh, setting, being in Paris, most of the time Prague being subbed in for Paris, but still they also, I mean, shooting in Europe, that's incredible. Um, But just like the richness of the colors of everything, I think everything, obviously I love how everything was shot from the first season, but everything just has such a 
luxury to the color, to the saturation, to the contrast. Who's doing it like them? They're not saying, oh, this is horror. Let's slap a gray, blue, green filter over everything and just like do it all in, in post. Let's not figure out how to make the textures and scenery come alive in camera. This isn't shade to any particular other show out there. No. Why would I do that? Why would I throw shade? What am I? An oak tree? Stop grumbling. Jeez. Then we have this here, body on the floor. I'm saying this is definitely, I, I would bet, I would bet a hundred million dollars that this is either her or another victim from the Théâtre de Vampire. And if I'm wrong, well, sucks to suck because I don't have a hundred million dollars. I don't even have a hundred dollars. So, but if I'm right, I do expect to, uh, to receive my bounty. Okay. So pay up. Why do I think that? Look at this here. This looks like a blanket covering to protect the floor, all bloodied up. This back here, this looks like mirror lights for the theater, which we kind of see back here in this shot, this shot here. So yeah, I think this is, this is there like under the stage, backstage area. You got some people back there. I'm sure they're going to clean it up. I don't know. Maybe they have an incinerator. Maybe they just like toss it in the CN. I don't know. Whoever this is, they're not having a good day. Okay. I can tell you that much. Not having a good night. This is me every New Year's Day, okay? Oh, dead to the world, on the floor, blood everywhere. My birthday's coming up, actually. This is gonna be me on my birthday. Next up, we have Louis looking very business formal. Look at that wool suit. Hello, sir. Opening some sort of box, I don't know, cigar box looking thing. Maybe Louis is uh, switching over to Stogie's now that. He has no one to light his cigarettes for him. He's like, okay, well, fine. I guess I'm going to have to start smoking something that'll last longer so I don't have to keep craning my pretty beautiful swan neck down to light my own cigs. Because that's wrong. In what world is Louis de Pont de Luc lighting his own cigarettes? It's a sad world. It's not a world I want to live in. It's not a world he wants to live in either. <coughs> Louis de Pont de Luc, my suicidal baby. My bro needs some Lexapro or something. I don't know. He just needs to start like munching on some people fresh from the psychiatrist office who have just like loaded up on a great dose of like uppers. <laughs> and that'll solve all his problems. It'll be like, oh, actually life is worth living. Oh, oh, like Santiago giving a little, a little, to Louis in the audience here. Hey girl, Louis like, bitch, you might be white and blonde, but you are not my type. <laughs> Listen, can I just say Santiago blinged out. All right. He had a black eyeliner pencil, a glue gun and a dream. He said, I will be serving bedazzled Grim Reaper realness. And to that I say, you've done it, sir. Congratulations. When's the Etsy shop opening? I want one of these. I am guessing that this is probably from the first performance that Hush, Louis and Claudia go to. Um, just because, I mean, this cheeky little wink here seems like a first performance type thing to do. Be like, I know who you are. I know that you've been sent here to see us. Hey girl, this is all Louis de Pontelac's world and we're just living in it. These clips could be, I mean, as we've seen before, just cherry picked out. They're not uh subsequent to each other but i'm gonna believe that these clips are subsequent to each other because i just think this is a hilarious reaction to santiago winking at him i mean look at that face he is not feeling it he's like buddy listen i know that i've gone for white and blonde in the past but this is not what i'm looking for thank you very much i've tried it not gonna try it again once is enough once is enough. But we do know that this shot, at least, is from the first time Louis and Claudia visit the theater. We can see Louis got the same outfit, Claudia's got the same outfit on, that we've seen from other teasers and trailers of their first visit to the Théâtre de Vampire. Louis, Louis is not impressed with this shit. He's rather, he's rather disgusted with this. He's, he takes an affront to it. Because as we know, Louis does not like killing people, as is, much less making a spectacle out of killing people. We saw in season one, he doesn't like Lestat's extravagance when it comes to his kills. So 
why in the world would he like this? He doesn't. He doesn't. I do kind of wonder a little bit, a little bit. I still think that Lestat, like knowing his nature and who he is as a character, the like extravagance was probably real and part of who he was. Um, but, you know, it gets a little bit dramatic and I'm kind of wondering if maybe there's some seepage. I was, I was pondering the possibility that maybe the extravagance of Lestat's kills or even the senselessness of it all is maybe being ramped up in Louis's mind by another little somebody who knows a thing or two about over-the-top dramatic killing. We shall see. We shall see. Either way, judgy bitchiness looks great on you. It looks great on you. Keep it up. What is bad here? So we have the very first utterance of this very ominous line that Louis keeps repeating. The blood is bad here. Right when we cut to a shot of what I believe is a World War II soldier. Um, looking at the costuming here. I mean, I, th I think it looks similar enough. I believe, I believe this is a British uh, World War II uniform. Same here. I think this is British. Um, these are American cavalry, but still, I mean, you can see like the, the tan, the wool, the button down, the pockets. I'm saying this is a fallen wounded soldier. It's so funny because literally the night that this was dropped, I had just watched episodes four through seven with my buddy. Got another person to watch Interview with a Vampire, my good pal Sammy. She loves it. We've got another convert, folks, okay? What are you doing? What are you doing for the cause of Interview with a Vampire? Are you forcing people in your life to watch it? You're not. You should be. So obviously episode four is the real introduction to the character of Claudia. Starts off like the very first line that we have read out loud from her perspective is about the POWs being malnourished and sinewy and that their blood, it's not good. The POWs are malnourished, nothing but bone and sinew. Their blood is bitter. It almost makes you feel sick to drink it. And then you watch this cut to the shot of soldier, the blood is bad here. So I think that maybe this is something to do with while they're still in Eastern Europe, while they're still facing like the uh, realities of the ongoing war, which they don't appear to be affected as much by in Paris at this point in time. And I think maybe, maybe there's going to be something going on with like the blood of very nutrient lacking soldiers and civilians. I mean, everybody's going to be affected by this. No one's going to be getting like fresh food in and, you know, eating properly and starvation and malnutrition really does a number on a person or perhaps a vampire as well. So clearly in this shot, a vampire is giving blood to this soldier. So uh, perhaps making, trying to make another vampire. Here is what I think. Here's what I think. Do you see this sleeve here? It's got a nice long train to it, cinched above the arm. Very dirty, ratchety fingers, girl. It's called antibacterial soap. I know there's war times, but send me your address. I'll send you some, okay? Let's, let's scrub a dub dub a little bit, okay? Looks kind of blue. We got some long stringy hair coming down, cinched at the waist. Just gonna say, just gonna say, this looks to be blue. This looks to be a cinching here above the sleeve. This, obviously, like you can't see your hand at all. It looks like a train sleeve covering up her arm here and long stringy hair, I can imagine, these nails nasty. So I'm kind of wondering if this is that revenant vampire making yet another revenant vampire. In the books, it's not conclusive as to how revenant vampires are made, how they come about. Claudia hypothesizes that it's either people who have been like completely drained. You know how you know, you drain them right before the drum of death and then you let go so that death doesn't suck you down with it. Most people die because they've had their blood drained from them. 
but she thinks that some people who just have like an astounding will to live, a strong heart, uh, don't die. But because they don't die, then they uh, create in them this un insatiable bloodlust, thus creating like this revenant vampire that's only, that's mindless and just like feeding on others. So that's a theory from the book. Another theory from the book uh, perhaps is that if, you know, someone is drained, then they drink the blood of the vampire. But let's say it was immediately like the example Claudia gives, put in a coffin, buried under the earth, and they have to, their f very first thoughts as a vampire for a long while are, is starvation and needing to replenish that blood, you know, and feed. Kind of, you know, this, uh, this idea that uh, the very first, like, that will then shape who you become as a vampire. I also think, too, you know, they make mention throughout the books and everything about how just because you turn somebody does not mean that they can survive the vampire life. Not everybody is meant to be a vampire. It takes a lot of gumption, you know, a lot of uh, willpower to be able to live this life. And a bunch of people can't do it. They go mad. They go crazy. They jump in fires. They kill themselves once they're turned into a vampire. And I've always kind of thought that maybe re Revenants could be an offshoot of that. Someone who just doesn't take to vampirism and instead is turned into this like scary creature of the night. I never really kind of considered Revenants making other Revenant vampires, but I would, again, I was rereading through the book and Claudia does kind of mention that, well, I mean, they have to because how do they come about? So all of that to say, there's never a conclusive uh, reasoning for Revenant vampires. And I think perhaps um, a reasoning that they could use for this story is about like malnutrition uh, taking place. Also like the stress of war. It's not a calming good time that has physical reactions within people's bodies, within their very blood, within their psychology, like the structure of like your brain and your body is changed. I mean, and I mean, World War II, that was destruction on a level never before seen at this point in time. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense that like maybe more revenants are popping up around this time if they're going to go along the route of like blood being bad, blood then maybe making vampires a little bit crazy. Also too, with, you know, every time that they feed on a person, they see their thoughts, they feel their emotions. And if you're feeding on people who are under extreme duress, not going to be good thoughts, good emotions. And, you know, maybe that'll seep through in the blood too, and kind of pass on to them a little bit as well, making them a little bit frazzled, making them a little bit crazy. And maybe these vampires who do live out there, who aren't moving around, who are only f constantly feeding on these people, these soldiers, these civilians, who are at an extreme deficit in health, constantly feeding on that is going to start building upon itself and maybe making them crazier and crazier and crazier and more mindless um, and thus resulting in a revenant vampire. That could be, that could be an explanation. We'll see. We'll see. I've babbled enough about that without being clear enough. So we're going to move on. <laughs> um, next up, got this foot shot for you freaks out there. Whoa! Don't know whose foot this is. Sorry. We haven't had enough close-ups for me to uh, even make a guess here. But she's rocking it, whoever this is, stamping out a cigarette, sexy. For the sake of bullshitting, I'm going to say this is Armand, because why not? You can't prove me wrong. <laughs> As I said before, until I'm proved wrong, I'm right. So this is Armand. He said, I will be even taller than all you bitches here, okay? I am the leader, not leader of this coven, all right? So if any of you even think about physically or metaphorically reaching higher than me, not happening. High heels on, bitch. High heels on. The blood is bad here. Whoa! Again, we have this line repeated at another shot of Eastern Europe. So 
that's just, it's confirming to me, at least, that he's talking a bit about there's something going on with the blood in Eastern Europe. But we have this shot of what looks like a makeshift little bomb shelter, this uh, rocket launcher thingy being flung off by a vampire for sure, because that shit's heavy. Human couldn't have just pushed it off. And um, what's this? The infamous hand coming out. What did I say? This was Eastern Europe, right? Right? However, I have more to say about this in a little bit. We're gonna circle back to this, okay? What is bad here? Ooh, shit girl. Ooh, you've been through the ringer. Honey, you don't deserve this. This, I mean, this has gotta be crushing, okay? They've come out here to try to start a new life and figure things out about themselves. And this is what they have to deal with. I just, I love this though. The fire reflected back in her eyes. Seeing her dreams, her thoughts, her expectations go up and literal flames were reflected back in her eyes. Whoa! We can see that Louis has some fresh cuts on his faces. They're wearing their running away from bombs outfits here. So I'm guessing that this is after they've run away from the bombs, run away from the Revenant, defeated the Revenant, maybe thrown the Revenant into the fires. And they're kind of just looking back and watching everything and kind of reflecting on, oh my God, what the fuck are we doing here? What have we gotten ourselves into? Next shot, we've got some scary looking teeth <laughs> roaring at us. And I want you guys to listen. I want you guys to listen to this, okay? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? That's a definite roar, for sure. That's a spooky, scary, creepy roar, okay? Creature of the night, roar. This has gotta be a revenant, okay? Because who else is making that kind of noise? It's not the revenant that we saw from the first trailer either, because we can tell we've got some stubble on the chin here. This is obviously a lady with no stubble on her chin. I think that they're gonna show them running into multiple different revenants throughout their fun little trips through Europe. Like this is, this is supreme shit, okay? This is good old fashioned horror movie shit, okay? This is my impression of Roland Jones. What's that? Francis Ford Coppola wanting to know if we're really gonna do that old fashioned vampire shit? Uh, yeah, we are in fact doing that old fashioned vampire shit. Go back to your wine cellar, nerd. Can you imagine calling Francis Ford Coppola a nerd? It's gonna be a horse head in my bed tomorrow. <laughs> what is bad? All right, cut to this. Lever being pulled. We have this body here in the background. We can definitely tell. I My assumption is correct. I'm right about everything. You can see the lines in the floor. This is a trap door where they're gonna let the bodies fall to the floor below. I think this is probably what this little fun lever is. I mean, you can see the boards. Look at these horizontal boards here. Look at these horizontal boards here. That's the theater floor. This is followed up by this silhouette of, I'm guessing Santiago on stage. I don't think this is the same outfit though that he was wearing earlier in the teaser. So I think this might be a different performance. Just with the, again, the silhouette of this. This comes out a little bit more. It's got a little bit more fluff here, but you know, who knows? He might be wearing a cape over it and then a dramatic disrobing of the cape. We'll see. Little flair, little flair for the theater girlies. He's got to go over the top a little bit. Have the drama, have the camp. Hi, Editing Autumn. I also wanted to point out, I meant to say it in this video. We also hear Louis say the blood is bad here at that cut uh, of the theater. Blood is bad here. And I have more to say about that later. <laughs> what is bad here? Okay, we have this nice little shot of Daniel getting a, a little snack. This, this is excellent juxtaposition. We have Daniel sitting at a table in this luxurious penthouse with his laptop before him. He's got a gorgeous little orange drink. He's eating very civilly with a fork. Cut immediately to your boy Louie. <laughs> in the wilderness looking raggedy as hell chomping down on on a little on, on a little human heart there hey louie 
Hey girl, um, got a little snack? Yeah? A little snack, a little human heart snack? Yeah, is it good? No? Okay, um, you look good. You look really, yeah, very zen. Your chakras are, they're looking so aligned. Um, do you want me to get you a smoothie or something? I'm gonna get you a smoothie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you a smoothie. This does not look fun. This does not look like a good goofy girly time, okay? Again, the people that they're coming into contact with in Europe, not the most uh, nourishing people out there. And when you're starving, you're gonna go for the meat. You're gonna go for the very center of blood there. And that's the mother frickin' heart. Shut up. <laughs> oh my God. Suffice it to say, this is not the idyllic romp through the countryside that they were maybe hoping for. I think this is also going to inform Louis when he's in Paris as well. Obviously, as I stated in the first teaser, this is around the time that Louis is going to start hallucinating Lestat. Maybe that has a little bit something to do with, he thinks, the bad blood and it making him go a little bit crazy. And he's like, oh, now I'm seeing my dead ex-husband. Great. I'm, I'm losing it. We got to get out of here. And then he's going to go to Paris and where he has better blood to feed on. But what's this? The hallucinations are still there. So that wasn't a symptom of the blood. This is me like missing someone dearly, dearly, dearly and sincerely, in fact, and um, manifesting him within my own guilty subconscious. Also, too, the effect that this is going to have on Louis as a person. I can't imagine he's going to feel very good about feeding on people and preying on people who are already being punched down the most um, and living through this horrific time. I can't imagine that's, you know, chicken soup for the soul. He feels bad about killing, like, normal bad people, much less innocent folks who are already being ravaged by a war. I don't think this is going to play out well in his mind. Also too, okay, so to circle back just a bit, notice what Louis is wearing here. Do you see what he's wearing? Fingerless gloves. I didn't mention this in my first teaser analysis. I did mention that the hand coming up out of the ground looked to me to be a gloved hand. What I didn't say specifically when I first saw it was, it looks like fingerless gloves. And then I thought, is this some like emo skateboarder vamp? Why are they wearing fingerless gloves? I'm not gonna mention that. As I pointed out before, this fringe right here, right around here. Yeah, remember when I was like, people think this could be Louis, but it's definitely not Louis. I was half right because it's definitely not Louis from the theater clawing up after being buried alive, which is what I saw a lot of people saying. So I'm right about that point. I was right about Eastern Europe and we still don't know. This might not be Louis. This might still be a revenant or another vampire, but I'm just saying with this following in quick su succession, either I think Louis and Claudia hiding out in this makeshift little bomb shelter thing, Louis's hand coming up out of the ground here to uh, escape into the night. Or this could still be just a Revenant Vampire's hangout spot or another Vampire's hangout spot. And this is them coming out of the ground. We won't know till May. That raggedy sleeve, oh honey, raggedy sleeve. Like, could be Louie, could be Louie. We have a nice dramatic pause here with the flames in the hand, Armand showing off his lovely little fire powers. That's fun. Louis looking, I don't know, either startled or intrigued by this. Again, we've seen this tunnel before from the very first trailer and the last teaser that was shown. Can I just say the way the flames dance across his hands and the way uh, Asad Zaman moves his hands? That's choreography, baby. That's bitchin' baby. He said flame on in more ways than one. You catch my drift? You catch my drift? You do. Yeah, we're getting there. As I said before, I'm curious if this is gonna lead to Armand kind of explaining the powers to Louis and being like, you could do this too. And Louis coming up with the fire powers. And this is how Louis learns the fire power. 
we'll see. But we have this with a direct cut to this, which I'm loving all the fire elements, the pyromaniac elements in this teaser. It's very uh, foreshadowing of what's to come later on in the story, especially, you know, that shot with Claudia and the fire in her eyes before. <gasps> but also to, you know, what's in store for the theater. I also think, you know, having this shot of the fire in Armand's hand cut to the shot of them running away uh, from bombs, it's kind of almost like, I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but you know, Armand starting a fire, then big explosion between Claudia and Louis here. It's still like symbolic, I think, of Armand, like, <laughs> being this bomb that sets off between Louis and Claudia and, you know, ultimately helps destroy that relationship. I do want to point out too, though, so this shot is the same shot, but just reworked a little bit different from the shot that we saw in the 30 second teaser. You can tell starting pose here, starting pose here. It's the same shot. It's colored a little bit differently and the explosion is different as well in this first teaser that we got it's just a small explosion on the ground whereas this one here it's a pretty big explosion in the building behind them it kind of rocks the camera a little bit and i'm wondering if this is either an effect of louis misremembrance of things revisiting certain details and them being different or if this is just honestly what i think it is is probably them finalizing certain shots finalizing special effects uh what we saw in the first teaser was an initial drafting of the scene whereas this i mean this one here is definitely way more impactful way more cinematic um so maybe this was them after they've reworked that scene a little bit amped up the flavor a little bit more um but i just thought that was fun to point out Ooh, the drama. I mean, like, this was dramatic too, but like, having a whole fucking building explode behind you? Girl, get out of there. Oh, oh, gay, 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 gay. This is gay longing if I have ever seen it in my life. Oh my god. Claudia seeing Madeline for perhaps the first time, maybe? Maybe, we think. Beautiful symbolism here. Walking down the street at night. And what's this? Out of the corner of your eye? A match striking. A light in the darkness. I don't know. I don't know. I'm saying this is the first time that Claudia sees Madeline. I'm saying it. I'm putting it on the books. Okay? Okay. What is the quote? What is the quote? Let's look at it. A match striking in the other room, a shadow leaping suddenly into life as light and dark come alive where there was only darkness. Book quotes, bitch. Book quotes. I'm highly anticipating how they're going to display this relationship between the two of them. It goes back to what I was kind of talking about earlier. The things that you want most are also going to be the things that hurt you the most. Claudia discusses in season one, who am I to love? I think she's going to find that here. And that's going to be great. We've seen clips of, you know, them smiling adoringly at each other. Obviously, we know that Claudia is then going to ask Louis to turn Madeline for her um, so that she can have a companion and immortality. And ultimately, unfortunately, they're both going to meet their end together. Oh, which I just thought about that. The implications. <sighs> What's that going to be like? Are we going to have... Frank and Claudia Armand that storyline because in that case we're not going to have like a sentimental moment of Claudia and Madeline like saying goodbye together and in, in their final moments but if we don't have that that's not going to be good for me that's not going to be good for my mental health my mental well-being I'm going to curl up in a ball I'm going to dig into the earth I'm going to do as Lestat does and um, not come out for a few decades, okay? Okay. Next up, we have the shot of Armand showing off some tremendous powers, um, putting the vampires, the coven, to sleep here. I know it's the coven because I went back through and tried to find details, and fortunately, they're striking enough that I can match people up. Notably, we've got Ginger Lamb Chop Guy here, Ginger Lamb Chop Guy here, Shorty Black Bob, 
Shorty Black Bob. Mr. Mister here with the black silken hair and the man bun. Mr. Mister here with the black silken hair and the man bun. So Armand is putting his coven to sleep in what looks to be a restaurant. I mean, we've got other people in the background. We've got waiters here carrying bottles of wine. So this is in public. So I'm wondering if this is going to be something where he's showing putting the vampires to sleep. Also, I mean, this has to draw some attention from some of the other clients. Is it going to be a case where Armand is like making them not see this happening? Or is he going to like mind wipe everybody? I think this is going to show, this is going to be a showing of Armand's power here. Because as I said before, he's very gifted in the mind gift. He does a lot of hoopy, hoopy doopy scrambling around. Notably, we don't see Louis or Claudia at this table. I would assume Louis would probably be next to him unless he's across the table from him. But who knows? I do have to say this final frame here though, this looks like this is a nose, this is a mouth open, this is a chin, this is a face. Here's a leather clad arm with a hand going up like this. So not going to sleep, maybe? I'm guessing this is maybe Santiago because of the leather. My guy has a style, okay? He knows what he likes. Leather daddy, hello. I don't know if maybe he's falling back asleep or maybe or maybe the rest of these guys were being big bitches and our mom's like, okay, shut the fuck up for one second. Not you, Santiago, though. Me and you. <laughs> okay, hi. I know things look a little bit different. It's a little bit topsy-turvy, but not so much topsy, more like turvy. What the fuck does that mean? Anyways, listen, I filmed the bulk of this before I went to my job, went to work, and then I'm back again here now because while I was at work, I had this idea and I wanted to share it before I started editing. I had this idea literally, literally, as I was screwing in a light bulb and it came on. Okay, that's, that's kismet. That's the universe. That's... That's divine intervention, okay? God came down to me and he said, Autumn, listen, all of this, everything I've ever done, the Bible, Christianity, it was all just to inspire Anne Rice, to inspire Roland Jones to make this TV show, okay? So I need you to keep doing what you're doing and evangelize the good word that I want to get out there because that's really what the universe and me making this whole planet has been driving towards this whole time. This has been my divine purpose. And well, I've got a few thoughts here that I would like to share and I want you to put in your little video, okay? And I said, have at it, God. Let I am your vessel. Let me speak for you. And God said, okay, here's the deal. I know I'm omnipotent and everything, but I'm disengaging that so I can be surprised by the narrative. And I said, God, I applaud you. I applaud you for your abstinence from gaining knowledge on the second season and being like one of us. And God said, well, I didn't come down as a man to not be one of you. And I've been doing that in little ways um, since Jesus. You know, I did the same thing for Lost. Who knew? It's crazy. I've been writing to the Vatican about my conversations because, I mean, I think this is pretty groundbreaking stuff. And all they've written back to me is, darling, it sounds like you're just very mentally unstable and maybe seek psychological help which honestly I don't get, but whatever, it's their loss. Anyways, God said to me, listen, here's the deal, Autumn. You know how in the books, Santiago and, and, and Louis, they had county fair winning beef. Did they not? Did they not? Why would they not in the show? And I said, wow, God, you're so right. And the books, Louis doesn't like Santiago because their very first interaction, Santiago comes up and he's like mocking him and miming him and like, stop copying me, stop copying me. And Louis's like, no, really, stop copying me. And Sadie was like, no, really, stop copying me. And Louis calls him a buffoon. And wow, wouldn't you know it? That's just, just the word to strike Santiago to his core and make him go crying to Daddy Armand. Be like, mm, bad man called me buffoon, make him apologize. And Armand's like, um, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen because bad man's pretty fucking hot and I'm trying to get a piece of that ass. So go away, little dove. So off Santiago flies, but he's not 
that's not the last of it, okay? He's not had the last of Louis here. It's not going to be that simple in the show, obviously. It seems like Santiago has definitely had his place bumped up. I don't know who exactly described Santiago as Armand's attack dog, if it was Roland Jones, if it was another writer, or maybe just someone I saw on Twitter, but that's how his role has been described this season, and I feel like, I feel like with how fucking gay this show is. It's going to be a little bit more than that. Maybe Santiago has been Armand's right hand man and right hand man. If you get what I'm, if you get my drift, if you catch my flow, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, if my fish line has hooked your lip and pulled you up out of the water. Got me, got me. And obviously Louis comes around. Suddenly Armand is engaged with this other guy, Santiago, being Armand's old number one guy, is like, hmm, that's not very chill. Don't like this. Uh, Armand, what's the deal with Louis? Why is he so guarded? He definitely knows something about Lestat, and he's keeping that close to his close to his chest. There's something fishy going on with this Louis and Claudia character, because that's kind of how it goes in the books. The theater's like, Armand wants Claudia out of there. And the theater, they're like, hmm, there is something shifty afoot, okay? So this scene here, here's what I'm thinking. And again, this is formed by nothing. Nothing other than, well, if you believe in divine intervention, that, or if you believe in me just not being of totally sound mind, that. Maybe they're having this fun little dinner with the coven. No Louis, no Claudia. Santiago's talking on his shit. Armand's like, dude, you gotta let it go. And he doesn't. So what does Armand do? Okay, <laughs> fucking everybody asleep, except for maybe Santiago, because I don't know, like this one frame, this one frame has like flown through my mind all day. Everybody else, <laughs> head down on the table. What's Santiago doing? He's like arm up, kind of going back. Maybe he's, maybe Armand's inflicting psychic damage, but like, okay, boom, brain blast. Look at me. Shut the fuck up about my boo, okay? Shut the fuck up about my boo. And tell me more about this shifty Claudia character and how, like, she's totally... There's something weird going on with her, right? And we should be suspicious of her and, yeah, maybe, like, I don't know, throw her in the sunlight. But not Louis, because he's totally... No, he wouldn't, because he's mine. I don't know. This is... This is nothing. This is based on absolutely nothing other than my conversations with God. If you want to not believe it, that's fine. You're sacrilegious, but it's fine, okay? If you do want to believe it, you're on the right side of history, okay? I am your saint. <laughs> Anyways, also too, actually, one second. I have one, actually, I have one more thing to say. I have one more thing to say about this, this scene particularly. I thought, I thought for sure, like, he's angry, heads are going down. I thought maybe, maybe we'd get a descending fang or something. Nah. Nah. However, however, see that? You see that? What I tell you? It's teeth or tits. And literally, watch this. The gap grows as he yells. They're trying to keep us at bay. They're like, listen, we're not going to give you what you want. We're going to give you something else that you want. <laughs> I mean, praise be. He's popping buttons. Do you see that? Oh, about to burst out of the shirt. I'm not complaining. Okay, consider me grateful. This is followed by the clip of the gal falling. We've discussed this. We've talked about this already. <gasps> we have Jesus Stat rising from the grave. Hello again. Oh my God. Is he still on the screen? Is he, can you, is he still there? Oh, it's like looking in the sun or like a really bright waffle house at 4 a.m. when you're drunk. It's just too beautiful to look at. I can't do it. Ow. I'm going to do a thought exercise here. 
I want you guys to imagine a little girl, a little three-year-old girl, and her name is Baby Jean. She runs around in the southern wilderness. She's got mud on her hands, code red mellow yellow on her cheeks. She's maybe not on a couple of live crawdaddies or two. It's fine. You have that image in your head? Is this the exact hair that she has? Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Curls? Yes. Frizz? Yes. Humidity? It's bumped up to the max, baby. It's like a swimming pool in here. Oh! Hey, boo, love you. So we have this shot of Lestat followed by this shot, this very concerning shot of Louis wearing a certain blue cardigan and white shirt that we have seen before from episode five. Hannah Moscovich, one of the writers and producers of the show, said that everything's going to be revisited, but especially the fight scene that we saw from episode five um, where not great things happened. So I think that's going to be that. Having a shot of Lestat followed directly by this, again, storytelling. I think we're going to see a little bit of a different scene play out here. Um, she did state that in all tellings of this story, Louis is still going to come off as the victim. It's not going to be like painting over like, oh no, like Lestat is like actually a really good guy. Like he might not be as bad as we are led to believe, but he's also not like, none of these are good characters, okay? They're fun characters. They're compelling characters. They don't have to be peachy keen. It's okay. This shot is crazy. <laughs> this shot is bone chilling. Louie. I'm gonna get you another smoothie. Followed by a cut to black and Louie saying, I don't remember this. I don't remember any of this. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember any of this. Louis self-actualization. Louis seeking his own truth. Louis gaining agency in his own tale. We won. Also want to point out here, so Louis is in the same black hoodie that we saw from the very first teaser trailer here with this shot of him looking at Daniel Armand, notably not in the scene here. This is going to be Daniel kind of helping Louis to piece together some things about his memories and perhaps some interference in those memories. Roland Jones has stated, uh, I think as far back even as like the very first Comic-Con, that's stupid. Don't listen to her. It definitely wasn't Comic-Con. Roland mentioned it in the post-episode interview after the finale. That's what I was thinking of. She's drunk. Don't listen to that. That uh, Armand has a big role to play in what Louis remembers and how he remembers this story. I'm interested to see just how much we see his 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 puppetry throughout it all, if you know what I'm saying. So we have them sitting here cut to here. I think maybe Daniel's going to be digging deep here. Louis's got to have another little, oh, it's getting too, it's getting too much. I need to have another relaxation session by my fun little tree. And Daniel comes and sits down to him. It's kind of like, hey, this is hard, but you like, you got to be real with me. We got to dig deep to figure out what the fuck is going on. I will say I got a little bummed at first. If you're like me, I was like, wait a second though. Louis was wearing that black hoodie in the season one finale. What if this is just like directly following the season one finale and we're not going to get quite to this point yet? I'm here to quell those thoughts because this is the finale here. Louis is in a black hoodie, but you can tell Daniel's in a button down here. Not in a button down here. These are two different scenes. This takes place later. Louis is just a sustainable eco-friendly queen outfit repeater. Yay! Go you, babes. Maybe two, he needs a, as like things are starting to come out, he needs some comfort. He needs to get into his comfortable clothing again. Black hoodie, black hoodie. We all have one. We all have our comfort black hoodie. Then of course, this direct cut to Armand. 
right after this. And I think this is clever for two reasons. Obviously, the first reason being, I don't remember any of this, direct cut to Armand, the person responsible for why he doesn't remember any of this, the person who's been uh, scrambling up his brain and serving it with a side of bacon uh, for who knows how long. I will say Armand is not like a villain, okay? I For sure, what he's doing is self-serving and manipulative, but he does love Louis. I'm not saying it's excusable, but again, these are not like good characters. They're compelling characters and they're gonna do compelling shit to get what they want. And I think, yes, a lot of the motivation for Armand's mind wipe and toying with memory is, like I said, self-serving. But I think also in his own mind, he thinks he's helping Louis by erasing some of these foul memories that are bogging him down. You know, despite the fact that maybe he was the cause for some of these foul memories, <laughs> that helps him out a little bit too. I do, I think that Armand does believe to a degree that what he's doing is to Louis's benefit. I think he thinks that he knows what's best for Louis and he's gonna guard him and protect him in that way. Louis can sometimes act out. I protect him from himself, always have. Buddy, ooh, psycho, psycho, psycho. Love you, but <laughs> you are not the expert on uh, on mental well-being. So we need to pump the brakes on, on all of this a little bit, okay? It's very much giving a princess trapped away in a high, high tower the highest tower, the highest tower in the world, okay? Not just the Emirates, not just Asia, the fucking world, okay? And Louis trapped up there. Who's gonna come save him? Daniel. So as I said, this is clever for the direct cut to Armand with his fishing around of Louis's me uh, memories. But I also think this is very clever to have this showdown between Armand and Daniel versus having a shot of, you know, Armand facing off with Louis because Daniel is the one who is, you know, gritting out the truth here. So yeah, Armand's definitely going to see Daniel as a threat to maintaining all of these threads, but also it's clever also because Armand has done the same thing to Daniel. Daniel also doesn't remember, doesn't remember any of this, at least not until season one when suddenly certain things are starting to come back to him. So Daniel's going to be trying to figure out how much Armand has intervened in Louis's memories, but also how much has he intervened in his own memories and his own life and trying to resurface again, not just Louis's tale, but also his own story and how it fits within this greater story here. Also, can I just say one more time, he is fucking that old man. <sighs> they fucking raw. The mess. Daniel, Louis, Armand, this fun little triangle here in this lovely little penthouse. What's gonna happen? <laughs> the claws are gonna come out. The drama, the parallels, the intrigue the fucking of the old man. So this ending also makes me more inclined to believe that Armand is going to erase his involvement with Claudia's death within Louis's mind. And I do think that's gonna push us to my beloved theory that this is not the Merrick timeline. And after like Louis and Armand have made up, I think Daniel's gonna suss out Armand's actual role in all of this. That's going to cause some major hemorrhaging in the relationship quite a bit. And that's going to push us then to, you know, the end of the season. The rock star Lestat reveal. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> also, the blood is bad here. The blood is bad here. The blood is bad here. I mean, that's just... That's just waiting for me to use that in my everyday life. Okay, that's how I'm piecing out of parties now. No more goodbyes, no more see you laters. It's just me looking ominously around at everybody and chanting, the blood is bad here. The blood is bad here and leaving. My friends are gonna be like, so um, guys, we're not inviting Autumn to game night anymore. Yeah, she's making everybody feel uncomfortable and weird and it's, we don't need that anymore. I'm gonna be pulled aside at work. My boss is gonna be like, Autumn, you can't start telling customers in the middle of a tasting that the blood is bad here. You're scaring them away and we need the business. I'm gonna keep doing it and then I'm gonna get fired and then I'm gonna draw unemployment because I was fired 
unrighteously and unceremoniously. And then I'm going to dedicate all of my time now that I don't have a job to interview with a vampire and making more videos. It's all coming together. Also, final note, I cannot believe I forgot to mention this in my initial recording of this video because it was literally the first thought that I had when I watched this trailer. And I was like, I'm not going to write it down in my notes because it was literally the first thought that I had. So of course, I'm not going to forget it. Always underestimate yourselves, folks. You are going to forget it. Write it down. Okay? Learn from me. Yeah, the whole, the blood is bad here. I've obviously given my reasoning what I think it might literally mean. Maybe. Eastern Europe, blood being bad, all of that jazz. But I think also it has great metaphorical meaning. The blood is bad here. Bad blood, okay? The phrase bad blood, I, I think it's, it's relevant and something to keep in mind, especially in the teaser where we're finally seeing Louis again, kind of try to start questioning things himself for the very first time. So for that to happen in a teaser and also talk about bad blood within a teaser, foreshadowing the souring of the relationship, the shared relationship between Louis and Armand is vampirism, is blood bad blood, poisoning of the blood, poisoning of the mind, all that jazz. So yeah, I came up with like a big grand literal explanation for it, but the very first thing that struck me by this phrasing was just the idea of the blood between them here and Dubai is bad. So I don't know. Take from that what you will. Anyways, peace out. So hi, addendum to the addendum. What I forgot to mention even in this little clip um, is that the third and final time that Louis says the blood is bad here, it's a shot of the theater. And I think that's referencing Louis not appreciating the theater and what they do and also what happens with the theater and Louis and then from there what happens with Louis and Armand in the present day. Okay, now, now we're done. Anyways, um, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hey, we're another week closer to that premiere day. We're all pumped up and ready for it, right? Hope you have a great day. Um, hope it's fantastic. Ooh, another terrible pun. I'll be here all week, folks. I'll be here all week. Um, have a great day. The blood is bad here. Your turn.